Hey folks, this is Nick Hawks with Gristle King walking you through HIP17 transmit reward scaling and why you don't want to put your hotspot in an area that has a ton of other hotspots. We're going to zoom into San Diego, my home in America's finest city, and take a look at uh, what this might look like. So if you're thinking about deploying in San Diego and you think, hey, I'm going to do something really cool. I'm going to put a hotspot in a place no one else is, and I'm going to be right near the airport because I know Helium is going to do this great job and we're going to be tracking packages and I'm going to move a ton of data. You drop your hotspot right in there. And you just take a quick look at it like most people do. You say, I'm going to turn on the res 8 hexes. There's no one within my res 8 hex. I should be good there. You look at res 7. You say, there's no one within my res 7 hex. I shouldn't get any kind of transmit reward scaling. But I'll just turn on average reward scale here in Helium Vision just to kind of check things out. And bam, there it is. You're getting transmit reward scaled no matter what because you can see all around you, every single hotspot is getting transmit reward scaled. Now, what does transmit reward scaling mean? Well, your hotspot both transmits or beacons and it witnesses or it hears things, receives things. Um, depending on the density of hotspots around you, the reward you get for transmitting um, or receiving for beaconing or witnessing will be scaled depending on that density. And Helium lays out the, the numbers and how that thing gets scaled. And that's what we're going to cover in this video. The big thing to look at right here is that Helium assesses every single hex resolution. So it goes from res 4 all the way down to res 10. And we see that over here in their Helium engineering blog. I'll put the links to these things in the uh, underneath the vid. But we're looking here and every single res from res 4 down to 10 is assessed and then any penalties are applied and they affect every other resolution. So it's not like they just look at res 8 or res 7. I get a lot of questions, hey, which one should I look at? You should look at all of them if you want to figure out what's going on. Now, I'll also say there is some other math going on behind there that Helium is not sharing. That's a uh, black box stuff that is just anti-gaming. But for the most part, for most of the results that you see, it comes from these resolutions and the chain variables or chain vars. So let's take a look at some chain vars. Here we've got two, one, and four. Um, it was laid out in a way that's pretty darn confusing to, to non-engineers and even to engineers. So we'll look at those. So the two refers to number of siblings. The one is density target and the four is density max. We'll go through that over on the map here. So we'll drop down to res eight because that's the resolution we we're looking for. And this is a nice example. Um, we'll turn this on and say, or we'll, we'll take, take a look at this. This is our hexagon, right? And we've got six sibling hexagons around us. One, two, three, four, five, six. The density target at resolution eight is one. That means that Helium only wants one hotspot per hex before you get transmit reward scale. That changes if you have a certain number of siblings that also meet the density target. And so that number of siblings at res eight is two. So if you have two siblings that also meet the density target, you can have up to the density max in yours. So we're looking at this here and we have zero siblings that meet the density target. No other sibling hexes have one in them. If we were to change our placement over to, let's say um, here, now we're gonna have at least two siblings that meet the density target. In fact, these are way over it. So there's four in here and there's four in here. Now, that means that you could have up to four in here without getting penalized at resolution eight. Doesn't mean anything as far as resolution seven, six, five, or four. And in fact, that brings up a good point. I'll turn on, I'll turn off average reward scale for now, and we'll switch from res eight to res four. So we're gonna zoom out to see res four, and you see that San Diego's got a kind of inherent penalty as far as these hexagons go, in that half of the res four, which is the highest resolution at which um, rewards are assessed, is in the ocean. So pretty unlikely to have hotspots in the ocean. That means that all of our hotspot placement gets compressed in about 50% of the normal land mass, land mass available. What does that mean? Well, we already saw when we turned on average reward scale, it means that every hotspot or almost every hotspot in this area is going to get transmit reward scale. You look around, you don't really see any ones here. So everything gets scaled. And that's because there's a ton, ton of hotspots in a pretty dense area. And in fact, many of those hotspots are just down here downtown um, and getting pushed in or up here in the whatever PB area um, and uh, and Point Loma so, or, or Ocean Beach. So sometimes you will see if you use Helium Vision or any other tools out there, you'll see a couple ones out on the edges. Um, this is most, you see this super clearly. So in this one, these are all ones because this is in its own res 4 hotspot that has 
you know, not even close to the number of hotspots that you need to go over reward scaling. But you're seeing some kind of edge cases here. And sometimes those are just brand new hotspots where the transmit reward scaling hasn't kind of caught up yet. And sometimes, like I said earlier, there's some black box stuff that's going on. Uh, you might ask how many hotspots are in this hex? And we can do a rough approximation by changing over to a region selection. And then we'll say it's probably about this big. You can't right now draw a region that is a hex, can't do a freeform region, but you can do this rectangle here. And what we're seeing is that we've got 595 hotspots approximately in that res four, uh, 480 online. So if we go over to hip 17 and we look at the res four chain variables or chain vars, we see that um, our density target is 250. And the only way you go over 250 is if you have at least one sibling that also has 250 in it. And in that case, you can go up to 800. But we can look at this. And if we turn on the res four again, and we turn off our um, region selection, we can see that is pretty darn unlikely for either of our, or any of our sibling hexes, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, if this is our center hex, none of these have 250 in them. So that means that we are gonna be scaled for every hotspot that goes in over 250. So even if you're up here, where it looks like there's almost no hotspots, uh, you're still gonna get scaled. Your transmit reward scales are gonna apply because you're getting dinged at res four. And that's pretty much how the whole thing works. You can go through and check all the chain vars over here on the engineering blog. Like I said, I'll put that link below. You can go through and read the HIP, HIP 17 right here. This goes down and basically the most important part for everyone is explaining how it works. So if you're the transmitting hotspot and you're in a, an area that's over dense and you're getting scaled, your transmit rewards getting scaled. And then if you're witnessing a hotspot that their transmit rewards get scaled, your rewards get scaled as well. So basically there's a, there's a penalty for every hotspot, whether it's transmitting or receiving, if it's in an overly dense area. And that is more or less how HIP-17 works. Best of luck with your placements and rock on.